traveling today and okay. that doctor's appointment is my name to use to say just the doctor will get it right. Okay. Well, I'm ready to go when you're ready to go on the light. Oh, I'm on. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so we're going to, um, so what I've done is I've prepared a, a lesson that's pretty simple, basic, short. I pick one subject. That's rare for me to do, but I've learned over the years. I don't try to teach a whole series in one time. Um, but I want to talk about the eternalness of God the eternalness of God. And the reason I want to talk about this is simply to do what the Word says, is faith cometh by hearing, hearing comes by the Word. So as you hear these things, and I'm a scripture guy, I don't like to deviate out of it at all. I don't tell a lot of, I mean, it's okay if you do, but I don't read out of other books much. I don't, I've just learned, just stay in scripture, Nathan, you stay safe. That's me. <laughs> and, um, and that's for me, but it helps. So I'm going to keep it simple, but I'm going to keep it very biblical. I've got more verses than I do comments, probably. And then at the very end, we're going to pray um, a prayer we had talked about during, um, during a prayer request that eyes would be open. So we're going to pray Ephesians chapter 1 together at the close. Um, and this is for Christians. I believe we can play that, pray that for non-Christians, too, um, that there's, a, there's an eye opening that must take place. So what I'm preaching this for, or teaching this for, excuse me, is that is is so we would understand more about God as your as your faith is built through the Word of God. It comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word. So as I talk about the eternalness of God, your faith will be built up in God, not man, not anything else. But your faith point point. I'm pointing to God this morning, saying that's what Brother Ronnie talked to me. I said I probably teach on God. And so I said I'm usually <laughs> safe there. I used to probably teach on God. But if we look into this, um, let's start with number one here. Um, God is eternal so this is a, a class and so we're going to kind of interact a little bit if you feel like it if you don't you know how it is i'll go ahead and finish it but uh but if you want to interact they got questions anything that's fine when you think about eternity you can this is you can answer this no it's not a wrong answer or a right answer it's just what do you think of when you when, when we say eternity what is your what's the What's the first, one of the first things you think about? Of course, I think about heaven. That's, that's one of the first things I think about. Forever. Forever. That's a long time. That's a long time. Glorified bodies. Oh, I'm waiting on that one. That sounds great to me. Anybody else? Eternity. Eternity. Praising God. Praising God. Wow. That's absolutely right. Praising God. You know how short this life is compared to eternity. The Bible says it's a vapor. That's it. You got we got that long. So let me just share a little bit of what I've discovered in my short years and got a little bit of wisdom, I think. Is that some things just ain't that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. You know? Um one thing I learned is me being right and having to prove my point. It's not that big of a deal. Now the Bible stands for what you believe. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the things in light of eternity are so small. So much. It's like a. I told my mom and dad the other day. Compared to eternity, my problem in life. I don't know if you've ever heard this. It's like a BB rolling down a four lane highway. <laughs> That's how small my problem is compared to the God of eternity. So when we look at eternity, I always thought a dot here, like it started somewhere and then straight ahead and out there forward is eternity that's kind of the way I've always pictured eternity you know and that's partially correct but not fully correct and that when I learned this it completely blew me away let me read this verse right here it says and this is in Timothy it says uh, I didn't put the, the chapter but verse 17 now to the king eternal immortal invisible to God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Very tempted to mess with those three words, but I got to stay on the first one. Now to the king eternal. Take a look at number two. The, the, this is what I learned from, uh, I don't know, uh, I learned this from a worship leader a long time ago, Sam, Sam Sheldon. I learned, he taught this in a class, I never forgot it. He took two, I get me a board. Uh, or, or imaginary board today, but I got it on paper for you. He took two lines and 
instead of a dot and forward, which I picture in eternity being it started somewhere and it's out there, eternity has an eternity past, present and future. So eternity is like two arrows going that way. Does that not blow your mind? It makes me, it blows my mind. <laughs> I go, what? What? God never started. He was never created. He was never, he didn't, something didn't if something created him, we need to find out what that was, but that's not what happened. He was eternal. He's always been. He always will be. And here, here's, this, this is, for me, this is almost kind of new because I find out he's not only in my past. He's in my past eternity. He's in my future. And he's in my present. Because he's not confined by time. We're confined by time. I had to be here on time, which that's, that's good. I'm glad I did. Hey man, I had to get out, had to get out of bed and be here on time. Amen. Amen. Um, and we have to dismiss on time because we have people coming in church. And we have to, time's a good commodity. It's okay. It's, it's good. But God is not stuck in time. He's an eternal being. So what he can do, oh man, he can restore the years. I'm not a preacher, but he can restore the, let me, let me burst a bubble real quick. It keeps tapping on my head. Why come teaching and preaching have to be one shouting and another one? Look, I can it shout don't. over teaching and preaching. It don't. Hello, y'all. <laughs> I can shout over teaching or preaching. Amen. It's just, it's all exciting to me. Um, so that's <laughs> this morning. So I'll get excited. If I can, that'll be all right. But he's everywhere. He's, he's omnipresent. He's everywhere at one time. And this is a whole other teaching, but he's all powerful. He's all knowing. He's omniscient. He's, he's, there's nothing that limitates him. He's not getting, watch this. He's not getting older. He's not getting tired. I mean, in a way, you can read some scriptures how he's tired of the way Israel was acting and some of his people, but we're talking about fatigue. He's not getting tired. Oh, the, the, the Bible says in Isaiah 40, um, one of my favorite chapters in the Bible, it's also about, have you not known him? you not heard? The Lord, he, he never gets weary. He's not tired. The Bible says, I think it's in Psalms, that he never sleeps nor slumbers. He's always, the, the keeper of Israel is always awake, watching over his sheep. Does that not, that builds my faith this morning. But that, that there's a supernatural that's higher than what I'm going through right now. But his ability is beyond. The Bible says that you can't even ask. Excuse my scriptures because sometimes they fly out. And I don't have the context, but I can't quote where it's at, but they just fly out. But but it says um, I can do exceedingly abundantly above, above all you can ask or think. So think of the biggest thing right now. Eternity is pretty big. Think of the biggest thing God could do. He said, I'm bigger than that. I'm bigger than that. I heard an example of that word one time and uh, that was talking about throwing a baseball. And God could throw a ball and go, Phew. And you go, wow, God. Watch. Whew. God can exceed himself. He can, act, he can exceed himself. I'm bigger than that. There are no limitations. I thought there were limitations because I live in a natural world. We're going to get to scripture about that in a minute. But I, I live in a natural world. So supernatural is kind of weird to me. Now, wait a minute. You're a spirit-filled Christian. Absolutely. But I still live in this stuff that's called the flesh. And the Bible says, well, listen, I'm going to me person another bubble. But a lot of people say, I'm under the pack of the devil. Well, maybe, maybe that happens at times. Most of the time, I'm under attack of me. It's usually this weak flesh that's going... I don't know if God can do that. Can God do that? I don't know if God can do that. And when I read those verses like in Joel where it says, I restore the years at the canker worm and the, and the, and the locusts. I restore the damn. The Bible says in the New Testament, redeem the time, redeeming the time, buying back every precious moment. Can God do that? Can God put me in a fountain of youth? Can, can this happen? Can God, can God heal? Can he restore? Can he put new body parts in people? Absolutely. He's God. Now I believe in each situation. That's why I have to seek the will of God, the plan of God, the timing of God in each situation of what God uh, is doing. But you can't forget what he can do. He's He's unexplainable. The Bible says in Hebrews 7, 3, I got on your paper. This is, um, and I have to, let me explain this a little bit. This is a, there was a priest called Melchizedek in the Old Testament. He was a type, which I love these. I love types and shadows. Um, he was a type of Christ. In other words, he wasn't Jesus, but he was a, he was a type of Jesus to explain about Jesus. So it was just a type of Jesus. And it says it in Hebrews, plainly. It says Hebrews 7, 3. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God, 
remains a priest continually. You know, the priest lost their job. Because Jesus is right now praying for me and you in, in an eternal place. He's right now. Did you know that? He's interceding right now for me and you. Isn't that awesome? It says he, he never had a beginning. He never had, he is the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end of, of, of his creation. And this is what's really cool. Um, he's not, again, coming into being. He's not getting, <laughs> we picture God as an old man with gray hair or something like, and he's sitting up there like, ooh, I'm real old now. No, that's not God. I, I got some theories on age, but that's not relevant right now. But I've heard some teaching. I'm thinking, hmm, maybe. Hmm. But, you know, but I'm thinking God is not a man that he should lie. God can't even lie. Did you know that? The Bible says it's impossible for God to lie. Well, you know why I heard somebody say this, but I believe it. Because if he says it, it's going to happen. If he says I got blue hair, my hair's blue. God can't lie. He can't make a promise either and break it because his nature, his nature of his personhood. Now, let me, let me get into that just a little bit because... Oh, I don't, this is just the introduction. Now, this is the meat. I hope to kind of, kind of, for about 10, 10 minutes, I hope to kind of massage this in. This is the meat of, the, of what I was wanting to say here. Um, is he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Did you see that? Excuse me if I, uh, well, I don't apologize for the word of God. But that's why I don't believe in abortion. He chose me before he made the world. How can I make that call? Ooh, I feel something here. How can I make that call? You don't know. He chose people in wounds. How do you know which one? Well, that one ain't chosen. Was it? How do you know that? You met, you're playing God. You're messing with God, I think. I know there's situations through rape and different things like that that I can't comprehend. I can't comprehend. I can't tell you what I would do. I can't say I would have made the right decision. But we pray people do. We pray for people. We don't judge, but we pray. But we look at the word of God and it plainly says, even David said, in my mother's womb, my days were fashioned for me when yet there was none. I didn't have a, I wasn't even born yet. God had plans for me. How can I make that call for somebody? You know, or they're not a human. It doesn't matter because in eternity past, now this is a little deep. Because I'm still trying to struggle. I'm still trying, I'm trying to understand this completely. There's an eternity. Somewhere I was with God, obviously. Somewhere. I didn't just, Nathan's a good idea. <laughs> Not according to Ephesians. We believe the word of God. He chose me before the world was created. Before he said, let there be light. He had chosen Nathan. He had chosen Noel. He had chosen us. Before he said, let there be light, he chose us. <laughs> so we can't make that call. He has chosen us in him and in turn. I don't know what we were doing, where we were, or what happened, but I was with him somewhere about there before the foundation of the world. He already chose me. So I was somewhere in him. I can't explain all that this morning because I don't understand all of it. But I do know that if, if I was chosen before then, God knew who I was before I ever hit this planet. Like Jesus, when the fullness of time had come, God sent Jesus. Aren't you glad that God put you in this time in, in time and eternity? Y'all ever want to be in another? Let's just be real here. You ever think you would fit better in another time? <laughs> did you miss it, God? Did you fast forward the button or something? Did you? I've been a good cowboy. I don't know what. I don't. What, I've been a good Indian. I've been good in the, in the Pilgrim days or whatever. You know, we think some medieval age. I watch movie. I watch movies and I go, oh, it seems like I fit in better there. <laughs> that would just work better for me. But God, no, no, no. He chose to put you in right now. If you got breath in your body, there's a reason that you're that you're here. How about Abraham? Talk about that. Miracles. Talking about God being eternal. Maybe Abraham a promise. Maybe he's made you a promise. He's made me promises. I hadn't seen them all yet. And I've wondered. I said, God, if you don't do this, about a thousand people have missed you because about a thousand people have told me this is going to happen. And I feel like it's going to happen, God. But God said, no, I can take Abraham at 99, which is really impossible. And I'm taking Sarah with a barren womb, which is really impossible. And I can create and I can do things that are beyond time. I can give a woman that old. Shit. God can do anything he wants to do. He can show what's funny is Jesus can even try. I think he can transcend time because he would appear in the Old Testament. And he can appear now and he appeared then. Jesus is, is, is an, he's eternal. The Bible says that. Christ, Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus, Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, I want to wrap this up with, the, with, with talking about the character of God. He's the same. 
But that doesn't mean God is stagnant. He's non-changing. So let's look at this. When we talk about holiness, when we talk about love, when we talk about eternalness, this is his attributes. This is part of who he is. See, we've got to understand God didn't pick, here's what's holy. You can't do this, you can't do that, can't do that, can't do this, and I don't do this. Okay, that's holy. No, no, no. God said, be you holy. Not because I do holy, I am holy. So that's the standard. It's not because God made it up. It's his personhood. That's why sin offends. That's why sin in his presence can't dwell. It's not because he's being mean. It's because his person is holy. And flesh can't dwell under that. Sin can't live under that. We have to have blood applied, which is his son, so we can be holy in his sight. We can be innocent in his sight. But God can't separate himself from people. I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry, next generation. We try to change what God, change the word, change what God, God's not going to change what he thinks. Well, that's traditional. That's old-fashioned. No, it's not. That's the, the, the character of God is holy. And if he says in his word it's not right, I'm sorry, God can't change for you. Come on. Army, do you like it all? No, I don't like it all. I got this fleshly stuff. Sometimes I go, oh, God, come on. What about that one? Come on. You know, can I get away with that one? I mean, you understand. No, I'm holy. I'm holy. It's not about can you get away with it. It's about being in my presence. And, and I want to be close to you. And I can't because I'm a holy God. And I made way for you to be close to me. But I can't change for you. But I do want to change you. And trust me, it's for your good. But you don't see that now. So I'm talking just to whoever you may talk to. So we pray for them. And we ask God to open their eyes. He's holy. We can't change that. He's eternally holy. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. People come and go, but God remains. Oh, goodness. This is part two. <laughs> so, we started talking about our prayer to start with was praying the eyes be opened. Number five, this is a little quote that I, I guess I came up with. I don't know. And we're talking about God in eternalness. Your perception can affect your reception. What does that mean? How I, this is what I'm doing this morning. I want to ask the Holy Spirit to help our perception of who God is be right. So in that way, I'm in a stance to receive. Because if I don't perceive or see him correctly, I'm going to have a problem receiving from him. I don't know about you, but my, we all have false perceptions because we live in this old body. And we have to crucify it and say no in the name of Jesus. God's not like that. But I have, I think we've all struggled. I always thought he was mean and ready to get me. If I mess up, he's going to hit me with something. Now, I don't know if that's part of growing up and some of the preaching I heard. Woo! Hell, I got saved a hundred times, y'all. I don't understand. <laughs> but but I'm just saying that, that I was fearful of God that don't mess up, don't blow it, don't. You know, and I was in this way of perceiving God of, as long as he don't hit me, I'm cool. That's a lie from him. It is. God's not ready to beat you. Now, the the, the and, and then we swing the other way. Well, I can, whatever, God ain't going to judge me. God's going to hold up. He can't change his word and he can't change his being. Come on. The world right now is in a place of accepting and changing so much. And I see us pulling away, pulling away, pulling away. I believe the return of the truth of God and the return of prayer to, to our churches. I believe there's going to be something God's fixing to do in our churches and our midst. I do. With or without our pastor at the time. I believe God's not limited by that. He's not because I'm here. And when I came here, I, I came here and I was like, I don't have a pastor. But guess what? I didn't leave and go to a church because they got a pastor. No. I felt the Spirit of God the first time I came in the door. Greg told me it was here. I said, Greg, I'm going to visit with you. And I just want to do this. I just want to. He chose us. Nathan, Noel, all of us, in him before the foundation of the world. Whatever he chose me for, that's what I want to be here for. Because eternity is a long time. That's where I receive my crowns, my rewards. But I have a short, short time to focus on that. I'm going to read this scripture, 2 Corinthians 4.17. This is good stuff. I use this at most funerals I preach because it's so relevant. Perception. For our light affliction, whatever you think about what you're going through, which is but for a moment is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Wow. 
<clears throat> Here's my verse. Uh, I live by this one. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are what? Temporary. Temporary. Let me stop right there a second. You see this wheelchair? Hmm. Can you see it? <laughs> Temporary. Can you see flaws on her skin and body? My nails are very and and and, and probably got crust in my eye too. Excuse me. Uh, but can you see it? It's temporary. Could you see Jesus on the cross? Temporary. Did you see Jesus in the tomb? Watch this. But the things which are not seen are. So, just to, just to flip it on you here, the kingdom of God is so awesome because it's so backwards from the world. It's so, it's, it's, it's funny. Because the way up in the kingdom is down is to humble yourself. And the way in the world is to dog eat dog to get to where you need to go. But in the kingdom, it's different. So even when we look at this, God's saying, well, hold on, hold on. I'm in a natural body. You're telling me not to look this bit. I, and I love church. And it ain't got nothing to do with the church itself because the church is people. But you see it. This won't be here one day. Right? Sicknesses, disease, anything you can you can perceive. But what I think is so powerful is that the things that are unseen actually created the things that are seen. So who's really, what's really real? That's kind of deep a little bit, but what's, I don't want to be kooky. I don't like kooky Christians that see golden coconuts, but can't quote John 3, 16. I don't, I don't, I don't deal with them. I say, <laughs> you know, but I'm, I'm not trying to get kooky, but think about it. The unseen, the Bible says that in Romans about the sinful world. They can't deny because it's creation. You can look around and say, there's God. He's actually, it's clearly seen. There's God. And he, and we know what God that is. So as we look at these temporary things, I have a, um, I'm going to pray this prayer. I have a handicap tag. You ever had one when you were temporarily hurt? There's two tags. I used to carry them around with me. If I ever preached it, I'd carry them around with me. And uh, one is, is red. One tag is blue. Now, this is what I always remember, if you can remember this. The red tag says temporary. That means I may be in this, you may see me right now in this condition, but it's temporary. So next time you see me, I might not have this tag. I might not even need to park there. But the blue one says permanent. It says permanent. It says this is a fixed condition. Well, I'm telling you today, heaven and eternally, and God, he's eternal, he's fixed, he's sound, but your situation is, is only temporary. So what I say to you today is, uh, Work harder, pray harder, do more? No. The Bible tells us to labor for one thing, and I, I, this is a whole other teaching, but labor to enter into rest. Not laziness, but rest. What do I mean by that? It means allow God to be God, the eternal God. The Bible calls the Spirit of God, as we're teaching on eternity this morning. He calls the Spirit of God the eternal Spirit. That eternal Spirit lives in us, right? So if God knows all things, the Bible says the Spirit knows all things then this, this eternal, to stir your faith up one good time again, to stir your faith up in God and, and to look at him, the things that are temporary, the things that you can see, they're not eternal. The things you can't see, they are eternal. So God, somebody say, God's doing the work. Even though I can't see it, God's doing the work. God is spirit. Those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. So we have to ask God to open our eyes. So this is Ephesians 1. And um, I kind of want to pray this as a prayer. And then we got scat. I'm sorry. Here we go. Ephesians chapter 1. This is Paul's prayer for, for the church. And let's do it as our prayer this morning. Father, we thank you so much, God, that you are an eternal God. You do not change. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Lord, you put eternity in our hearts. And God, we know, God, that we only have such a time on this earth, God, that's short. So, Father, you're outside of time, and we ask you to do some miracles in time, God, that we can't do. But, God, you are you are our Father, and you, God, are in control. So, God, right now we just pray. I come in agreement, God, with this prayer for, for the people of God, Lord, and for those that need you, Lord. Uh, in the Word of God, you said, Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you, this is a prayer, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. 
the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him in his right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also that which is to come. In Jesus' name, amen.